Well, I have to admit um, my own stupidity this morning. Um, we're running a little late because of me. I went storming down to the education building <laughs> and storming in to say, oh, I think this is the wrong building. <laughs> so let's hope my day improves um, uh, from that and that you all have an exciting couple hours here. Well, I'm very excited to celebrate this moment as we launch the state's open source policy and playbook. Long in coming, very important. Uh, it is the latest in a string of innovations in which the state can take, I think, great pride. Um, and it marks another major example of the good things that can happen when we create the space for innovation. The policy and the playbook are just parts of what we hope to accomplish by starting the Code California Initiative, which is aimed at creating an open source community to benefit California government and the people we serve, the most important. This December morning is a good opportunity to share some examples of what we've accomplished, innovations from innovators like all of you. I've had the honor to serve the state and Governor Jerry Brown as the Secretary of GovOps, Government Operations Agency, since it became uh, in existence uh, over five years ago. And man, has it zipped by, huh? Sheesh. Um, <laughs> as agency secretary, I felt the most important objective I could have in my new role was to help create an energy around the value of new, practical ways of modernizing government processes. We needed to make sure that the processes that determine the work that our colleagues do, day in and day out, truly added value to the lives of the people we serve. And, probably just as importantly, added value to the work that our colleagues do for the state. When those processes don't add value, we need to change them. Is that my phone? Oh goodness. I'm, I'm having a morning, you guys. <laughs> This works best when we have the people who do the work are involved in improving the processes that determine how they do the work. Nothing makes more sense than that, right? You all know what works best because you work in the processes and you know the delivery of those services can be made better or changed. That requires space for innovation and a culture of openness to allow people to collaborate. Our goal is that Code California be a space for innovation and collaboration, and then it will help foster truly a culture of openness. We have been able to use this energy to build space for innovation many times in the last few years. We don't tend, tend often to be vocal about it. I don't like that much, but we have had some accomplishments. I think it's important to call out a few of them uh, to show that the value of a, what the value is of establishing and expanding a space for innovation. These examples thrive in an open culture, especially when coupled to a commitment to iterate to a, or an iterative approach to continuous improvement. A little bit of word salad. We all, we're all throwing around iterate now, just like we were throwing around agile three or four years ago. It's just continual improvement. You get it as good as it needs to be, and you move on, and you go back, and you keep correcting and keep keep improving as you learn more to uh, better deliver services. Um, so the example, one, one example, the first example that I'd like to share with you this morning is four years ago, California piloted a lean program that has evolved into California Lean Academy. It's been uplifting to give our colleagues the tools and, a dry, and have put them in the driver's seat to re-engineer processes of their daily jobs. They know best what adds value and what is wasted effort. We have successfully trained more than 7,000 of your colleagues that now have the tools to improve the way we serve Californians. In 2014, GovOps launched the California Civil Service Improvement Initiative. I always like to do this. How many have heard of CSI? Oh goody, I wish it were more. We needed to rethink and enhance the way our state recruits, develops, and retains a model workforce for the 21st century. We've successfully consolidated 4,100 job classifications 
into fewer than 2,800 classifications. Okay, I'm going to pause. What does that mean? What happened over time in state government that I think just pull, puts a monkey wrench into it all is every department was allowed, for good and sufficient reasons, by SP, State Personnel Board and CalHR, formerly DPA, to um, have their own department-specific classifications. Now, what happens with that? What happens with that is every department then has to run their own exams for between 30 and 50 grand. They have to create their own list, and it's only their list. It's not a shared list. And so what does, at the end of the day, what does that do? Those specific classifications where we had 4,100 of them when CSI started, we're down to about 2,800 now, which is way too many also. That means that it takes us about a year to get a recruited candidate in the seat. And that doesn't make California the employer of choice. That doesn't make us competitive. So we went about changing that, and I'm hoping it continues. Although our goal is to consolidate all the bureaucratic classes, I added bureaucratic, we also made room to introduce skills to start modernizing our roles, introducing the research data analyst classification series. So I must say it was a little bit confusing to the state personnel board when we came forward with a request to add a new class. They said, Maribel, you guys have all have been about consolidating classes. However, we didn't have the classification in our world that we needed. So we now have a data analyst classification series. And I think the test was, the exam was just posted, correct? So I encourage you all to go on CalHR and check that out and encourage people you know to take that exam. It's going to open up um, some experience and skill sets that we just have not grown in state government. There are more opportunities, frankly, to continue to work on CSI so we do become California's employer of choice. Also, GovOps and the Department of Technology, Amy Tong, uh, launched an open data pilot in 2014 and refined our model during the last four years with an emphasis on civic engagement and on giving departments a place to test out open data without cost of risk, cost or risk. We're in the middle of the second gold rush and I really mean that. I think of the data that we have in state government as, as a gold, as, the, as rich as the gold that Sutter found. So I like to consider it the second coming of the 49ers. Um, this time, the gold is the data that the state holds and too often just hoards. Very important that we open it up and share it. We have a wealth of untapped data just waiting to be mined and share to gain insights into how our programs work, to make smarter decisions, and to drive better engagement with the public. Also, CA.gov is, is California's online portal, which of course you all in this room know. We redesigned it a few years ago, keeping in mind that users and services they need have to be our North Star. Having a central place where Californians can find their government services is key. The, the redesign of CA.gov was a start, and we will upgrade it and make it better. We will iterate. The next step is to implement our new web standards policy. This will ensure the model that we have for our state should be serving its constituents throughout all of our state websites. We are entering into an era of building digital services. Yahoo, right? Okay. Lastly, three years ago, our, we partnered with California Health and Human Services Agency, the Department of Social Services, Code for America, 18F, Department of Technology, Department of General Services, and others to embark on the demonstration project that used human-centered design, agile development, modular procurement, and open source to revamp the child welfare service system. Um, this effort gave us an opportunity to collaborate across governments and with industry leaders. We continue to learn from this engagement, and it hasn't been easy. I will tell you we've had some bumps along the way, but it truly was our um, first demonstration project to get us into the new, new form of procurement as well as project oversight, and that's using the Agile process. 
After all, what was it? What was so important about what we we undertook at CWSNS? It was the children. These the child welfare um, workers that take care of those children and the children themselves. Thousands were at stake, and if you have a child that's misplaced in the wrong home, um, it can be absolutely a disaster. And that the program that our social workers are having to use at the county level um, was uh, was not adequate for for them to do their jobs properly. Today, we are building on the lessons that we learned um, from the CWS project and from our partners in the federal government. Under the Obama administration, the federal government led their open source efforts by releasing an open source policy and code.gov, a repository for open source code. They took the first steps and we thank them for that because we can follow. Um, now we are adapting their work for the Golden State and we uh, have adopted a new California open source policy and strategy of our own following uh, on the footsteps of the Obama administration and all that they accomplished. These commitments show that we are starting to build a culture of openness and that learning from others and sharing what we learn can help us find a new way and actually can help us lower the risk of, of the projects we do take on. Openness truly, truly, truly the future. For example, IBM doesn't see its $34 billion bid for Red Hat as a bet it's an investment. And for IBM, a chance to reinvent itself, it isn't just IBM. Microsoft is working more in the open, freeing up some of its code to share because it sees the value of the collaboration and the value of making developers work easier. As part of that goal, this year, they bought GitHub, the open source repository that is more than just a place to share code. It is a developer community based on culture of openness. Code California shares the value of collaboration through California's own GitHub open source platform, code.ca.gov. Starting this initiative is a commitment and it puts the responsibility on us to learn how to use these tools as well as the opportunities the marketplace is giving us. Code California is an opportunity to embrace openness, cross collaboration, and, and share and grow new ideas. Beyond code, this is about building tomorrow's government today with an open culture and with a community that will grow that culture. I ask you to join this effort with the same energy that you have an open and that you have an open mind. Together, we're going to create an open culture and we're going to serve the people of California far better for it and our fellow colleagues. So thank you very much. I know this is going to be an exciting few hours and I appreciate a few minutes of yakking at you. So thank you.